My ladies, my lords, permit me to, my name is Dego Anjiro, permit me to address issue number eight in respect to our petition. And while addressing that issue, my ladies, my lords, I'll be addressing or I'll be seeking to answer the question whether or not the election that was conducted on 9th of August was a constitutional election. While I do that, my ladies, my lords, permit me to refer you to various affidavits, and I begin by referring to paragraph 52, paragraph 53, and paragraph 54 of our petition. I'll also refer to paragraph 51 of the vice chair's replying affidavit, that's the fifth respondent. I'll also refer to paragraph 25 of the chairman's, Chebukati's replying affidavit. I'll finally look at paragraph 19 of the first, second respondent, William Samoy Ruto's affidavit. Why are these paragraphs important to these proceedings, my ladies, my lords? And while addressing that question, I am going to refer to various pr provisions of the Constitution. I'll begin by referring to Article 88 of the Constitution. I'll seek reliance again on Article 89, Article 97, Article 138, Clause 2. I'll also seek reliance on Section 2 of the Election Act, and I'll also seek reliance on Section 83 of the Election Act. My ladies, my lords, if you look at the affidavits that I've mentioned, and most importantly, affidavit by the, by the chairman of the commission, at paragraph 25, he defines and says that he conducted tally telling of ele election results in 291 constituencies. Paragraph 19 of William Ruto's, Honor William Ruto's affidavit, again he says that elections were conducted in 291 constituencies. The fundamental questions, my ladies, my lords, is how many constituencies do we have in this republic? If you look at Article 138, Clause 2, the Constitution provides that elections shall take place in each and every constituency in this Kenya. And when you define constituency, my ladies, my lords, you look at the provision of Article 4 and Article 5. Article 5 of the Constitution, which defines the territory of the Republic of Kenya. Then you further look at Article 89, Clause 1. It is says there shall be 290 constituencies in the Republic of Kenya. And that is where the law contemplates that elections shall take place. But what, what happened on 9th of August is that we have submissions and averments that elections took place in 291 constituency. The fundamental questions, my ladies, my lord, is where did this extra constituency come from? And is this extra constituency a constitutional constituency defined by the armpits of Article 89? There may be arguments that this was a constituency by the diaspora. Yes, they may have their rights under Article 38 to vote. But the question is, is it a constituency within the meaning of the law? We submit that to the extent that individuals not confined to Article 89 of the Constitution, to the extent that the elections of an extra constituency not defined under Article 97 took place during that particular time, that contaminated the election. You must then ask yourself, to what extent was the contamination? Article 138, Clause 4, requires the Commission to compute whether or not the president-elect has attained 50 plus 1 percent. We are submitting that these elections that took place in alien constituencies contributed to the, the, the computation of 50 plus 1 percent. Then you might ask yourself, my ladies, my lords, what then is the test that I'm trying to, 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 sub, to, to apply? I am applying the test proposed by Section 83 of the, Constitution, uh, of the, of the Election Act. It provides that an election can be voided if that election did not comply with the Constitution or other written law. 
And this is a fundamental question, my ladies, my lords, because a constituency as defined by, as, as defined by Article 289, sorry, Article 89, that must be within the territory of Kenya as defined by Article 5, then contemplates a situation whereby there is a question of representation. It subjects the uh, people of Kenya to exercising their sovereignty through the representation of those people. The question then that begs an answer is how can an election that has been infiltrated by alien constituencies be regarded as a constitutional ele uh, election? We submit thus that that waves. It waives the fundamental requirement where IBC under Article 88, Clause 5, is required to conduct an election within the armpit of the Constitution. It is a mandate within the IBC that the mandate is so fundamental that it cannot be waived, it cannot be fettered, it cannot even be relaxed. An individual cannot create a constituency. If it was in the interest of Kenyans, while promulgating this constitution and adopting this constitution and giving this constitution unto themselves to create an extra constituency, there was nothing that was as easy as saying as such. My ladies, my lords, permit me to address the question of the 27 constituencies. Again, it has been submitted by my learned friend that under paragraph 25 of the uh, Chairman Chebukati's replying affidavit, he has crossed over that weight issue. He does not consider that 27 constituencies, which makes about 10% of the Kenyan constituencies, which translates to about 1.9 elect elected voters, were not included in the final tally. And what does he do? He makes and he amends and carefully uses the words which to, to apply. In his replying affidavit, he technically avoids the use of the word declaration and he uses the word announcement. The, the word announcement is not akin, is not similar and does not mean declaration. Why my, my ladies, my lords? Because Article, 130, Article 138, Clause 4, presupposes a declaration of all the polling results by the IEBC. So this declaration is not akin to announcement. And therefore, my ladies, my lords, we are submitting that the chairman of the Electoral Commission was lost on what he, need to, he needed to do. He is making a declaration and reducing the question of declaration to the question of a master of ceremony. The IBC chairman was not called upon to just officiate the process. He was called upon to execute a constitutional obligation. And therefore, when the law speaks about a declaration, there must be clear demonstration that the same was done. What happened, my ladies, my lords? He says that the law does not, allow, does not require him to do so. He does not annex any evidence that the same was declared. He does not annex any evidence in his affidavit that there was stalling. He does not aid this honorable court to make an opinion that yes, the requirements of the constitution were met. Finally, my ladies, my lords, we need to interrogate the conduct of the chairman of the IBC. We need to interrogate the previous and even the current conduct of the chairman. He was effectively described by my senior line of friend, Mr. Norji, that is a person who has perfected the art of imperfection. And he has perfected the art of imperfection by making sure that he conducts a lone rager process. Remember, my ladies, my ladies, my lords, to the run-up run -up of the second election in 2017, a similar issue arose, which, cons which necessitated the resignation of the commissioners. How long shall we allow an individual to keep on transgressing the law? How long shall we allow this individual to keep on putting Kenyans and to, uh, to, to, to subject Kenyans into uncertainty? The law requires that there must be certainty. And the certainty contemplated by the law is that I shall cast my vote and my vote shall count. And where are the 27 constituencies fundamental and key to these proceedings? If you look at our paragraph 20, uh, 57, uh, 52, 53, and 54, we have 
listed those constituencies. It is where an individual or the first petitioner has his, uh, has his supporters. It is where he has his support base. So were they left out as a matter of design? Were they left out by default? Or, or was he holding someone's brief? My ladies, my lords, we submit that to the extent that those constituencies were not tallied, were not verified, and the declarations were not made, then this election did not meet the provisions of the Constitution. Finally, my ladies, my lords, he says in paragraph 25 that he can announce elections any time that he so wishes, even if there are some constituencies that have not generated their results. But what does section 39, subsection 2, subsection 2 of the Election Act provides? It provides, my ladies, my lords, I would wish to read this. The chairman may declare a candidate elected as president before all constituencies have transmitted their results. The operating word here, my ladies, my lords, is the word before. So if before, at the time he's declaring those elections, the constituencies have not generated their results, he can declare. But the situation where we are in, my ladies, my lords, on 9th, going by the dictates of Maina Kiai's case, the, uh, the chairman had received all the results from the polling stations. It was therefore incumbent upon him to make sure that they are included, to make sure that they are tallied, to make sure that they are verified. Finally, my ladies, my lords, permit me to devour on, on an issue that was dealt with in the morning by my senior learned friend, Mr. Uh, Senate, uh, Governor Orengo. My ladies, my lords, I am referring to the affidavit, replying affidavit filed by Honorable William Ruto, and I'm referring to page 111, where it indicates a preliminary statement of the IGAD election observation mission to the August uh, elections. At that paragraph, my ladies, my lords, these were individuals who were observers of the elections, who were out there observing the elections. When it came to the question of analyzing the voters' turnout, the report says, it is annexed in Savidavit, that in most of the polling stations visited, voters' turnout was noticeably low and recorded around 55%. Those were observers out there in the field observing the elections, giving a return of the 55%. And this 55%, and you can see how this computation of the turn of, turnout is fluid. It's so fluid. It's a lever. You are not able to hold it. The chairman is not able to tell about the voter turnout. The report is giving us a different voter turnout. So what exactly was the voter turnout? So that the voter turnout then can assist us in the computation of the sum of 50 plus 1 percent. Finally, my ladies, my lords, there's a question as to there's a question as to the computation of the 50 plus 1 percent. That when the chairman gave his final public address about the voters' turnout, he deliberately exempted those individuals who voted manually. To date, we are not aware of how many people passed through the manual registration. How many people voted manually? I mean, my ladies, my lords, it is not within the ampit or within the purview or within the power or the discretion of the chairman of the electoral commission to do that what he wishes. He cannot deal with the question of elections from his aspirations or from his wishes. He must deal with the question of election as dictated by the constitution, as dictated by the election, election laws. Finally, my ladies, my lords, we urge you to admit our petition and you dismiss the replies filed by all the respondents and find that this election was not conducted in accordance to the constitution and my ladies, my lords, that you give an order that the sovereignty of the people must be respected and the sovereignty of the people cannot be respected, cannot be upheld where there is serious transgression 
are the wishes of the chairman of the electoral commission. Finally, my ladies, my lords, there needs to be a retribution. There needs to be a stop of all these transgressions. How many times shall we subject Kenyans to these processes? How many times should we appear before you with the same gravement every day, every day, after every elections? There ought to be a stop. And a stop is making sure that the proper sanctions, criminal sanctions, as prescribed by the Election Act, are meted against any transgressor. And there is no one who is above the law, including the chairman, so that people may learn to respect the law. I'm so obliged. I donate the 26 minutes to the court. <laughs> thank you. Seconds. Those are seconds. Um, thank you very much, Council. Uh, Srigan's petition number seven. Uh, we have Mr. Mtata appearing for himself, and uh, Professor is appearing for the other. So I think you'll share the time, Prof. Uh, yes, I... Thank you.